In our previous videos, we gave you an overview of the human-centered design process and mindset. Now let's practice it. We'll use some of the tools and activities from the toolkit that will help you better understand a person's needs, define the underlying problem, and create innovative solutions. These tools are really easy to pick up and can be used in organizations big and small. If you're watching this recording with your team and would like to participate in the activities, here are some ground rules. Be constructive and respectful. Give everyone a chance to voice their opinion. Be an entrepreneur, not a silent partner. And finally, enjoy the process. At the discovery stage, we focus on understanding the user. We want to be open to learning new things and not be quick to judge. Be aware of your biases. We'll first create a plan on how we will conduct our research, followed by an interview with our user to capture their needs. Finally, we'll draw out key insights from those interviews. These tools are helpful for NGOs to create some structure around how you engage with a cohort of clients and frame your evidence gathering. That evidence can then help you tell your client stories to your organisation and funders. This section will take about 45 minutes to complete. As we mentioned at the start of the workshop, you'll be using some of the worksheets from the toolkit for the discovery exercises. Make sure to have them printed and ready before we begin. You'll also need some post-its, markers and a timer. In the upcoming activities, you'll be working in pairs, so try to get an even number of participants. When we ran these workshops with NGOs from different sectors, we wanted to pick a common topic that everyone can relate to personally. From homelessness to disability support, many NGOs are focused on helping their clients transform negative behaviour into positive. So for our design challenge, we have chosen the universal topic of behaviour change. If you have watched this workshop video before, or attended one of our live workshops, you might want to work on a topic that's more specific to your organisation, and that's okay. The tools and activities we're about to use can be applied to just about any issue or area. The specific behaviour change we'll be focusing on today is one many of us have experienced one time or another, and that is the New Year's resolution. We chose this topic because of its personal and emotional impact, which we hope will help you to gain more empathy in the research process and ultimately relate back to your roles. To begin, choose a New Year's resolution from this list that most resonates with you. Spend a few moments thinking about the resolution you chose and why. If you are following this recording with a small team, make sure that at least two people have chosen the same resolution, as you'll need multiple people to work together on the same topic later on. Each of you will try to design a solution to help your partner accomplish this New Year's resolution. Now, get into pairs. In your pairs, spend some time to give your partner a brief overview of your chosen resolution and why you find it hard to accomplish. Avoid going into the details, we'll do that later. Take a minute each for this activity. You can now pause this video and resume it in a couple of minutes once you've completed the activity. In this design challenge, we'll be using the interview method. Interviews are personal acts and will help you empathise with your user. You'll now work individually to plan your research for an upcoming interview with your partner. Keeping in mind the overview you heard from your partner, plan your research objectives. Think about the questions that you'd like to ask. Each person should now have in front of them the research plan worksheet from the toolkit. Keep your questions open-ended and think about answers you can't easily get from a survey. The best questions are ones that focus on the hows and the whys. Find out about your partner's wider context, their lifestyle, culture, environment and behaviours. Look out for moments and experience. Get to those whys. You have about five minutes for this activity. You can now pause this video and resume it after you've completed the activity. Now that you've planned your research, it's time to interview your partner. Use the questions in your research plan as a guide 
but make sure to keep things conversational. Ask follow-up questions if anything is particularly unclear or interesting that you want to know more about. Just like in real life, you'll want to start with a few simple everyday questions to build rapport and get comfortable with your interviewee. This activity will not only help you to practice your interview techniques, but also feel what it's like to be interviewed and share personal information with someone. Each person should now have in front of them the Capture User Needs worksheet from the toolkit. Use it to record the information from the interview, including any noteworthy quotes. And remember, it's not just what they say, but how they say it. Capture their past behaviours as well as feelings and emotional state. You can take up to 15 minutes each for this activity. You can now pause this video and resume it after you've completed the activity. Now that you've completed your interview, it's time to review what you've captured. Take a look at your notes and write down key findings on post-its. One post-it for each finding. Try to draw out at least six findings. Look for things like emotional needs, motivators and pain points. Here are some examples of findings. Quotes are great, so make sure you write those down as well. Try to write as much as you can on each post-it so anyone could pick it up and get an understanding about your findings. You have five minutes for this activity, after which the discovery stage of the workshop is complete. When you're ready, continue to the next video to start the definition stage.